My idea was to choose uh, incidental songs. They're, they're popular songs that would that that might easily be heard in that location, but that would have some commentary or support on the um, on the action of the movie, the situation of the characters, uh, some co some commentary um, on on the ironies at play and. Um, the, the dramatic tensions at play that would uh, seem to be entirely um, arbitrary. For example, there's a, a girl in the movie uh, who is having an affair with an illegal alien because her husband is such a dick. And um, she uh, turns on the radio and lo and behold, it's Flaco Jimenez's uh, song, um, This Could Be the Night You Love Me. This could be the one, the night you love me. As far as Marco goes, I hired him. I think the, uh, the real joy in this project, in um, working on this project, was the, uh, the fact that it was a real labor of love for Jimmy Lee Jones and his enthusiasm and um, artistic uh, capabilities really carried through. I listened to the work of a lot of different composers. And um, Marco had been doing mostly um, horror films and um, doing standard commercial fare. Well, I looked into his background a, a little bit better and uh, learned that he'd uh, graduated from Brown University in, in Rhode Island. So I had the idea that he might be well read and, and that there might be a chance he would understand my jokes. And then I learned that he had been an, an apprentice uh, of uh, Eno Morricone's for three years. So I could tell that he knew how to write a movie score, not only from listening to his work, but from looking at his background. And I thought he might be just right. I uh, was not only inspired writing it, but listening to him talk about the film. And he would come to my studio and um, talk about individual scenes and... and um, um, even though he's not a musical person in terms of being able to express an idea and say, oh, the clarinets, well, we didn't use any clarinets, but the, uh, the, uh, a certain instrument needs to do this at this point. It's not that kind of dialogue. It's, it's more, of, um, more of an abstract um, discussion about the scene. I, I thought if we offered him a chance to uh, do something artistic, uh, something creative, uh, and, and, and turn him loose, he'd be grateful to have that opportunity and would work cheap and do good work. And that's what happened. Uh, and as a result, um, you know, we have a beautiful score from Marco Beltrami, and, uh, and I have a new friend. The direction of the score, I think, was due mainly to the fact that when I saw the film, I was, the, the thing that struck me most, besides this friendship theme that was between Tommy Lee Jones' character and this um, Belchiatus character was the landscape itself. Marco would uh, uh, create a composition. He, he uh, had some eccentric uh, instruments that he wanted to use. I thought that the, the music should sort of have an almost earthy feel to it, almost an indigenous feel or an organic type of setting. And there's a lot of different percussion instruments that that um, Native Americans and uh, Mexicans use like um, things that you wouldn't think of. Like, uh, for instance, there's uh, this cactus that they actually strike the needles on the cactus and it works as a percussive instrument. We take that and mic it and then sometimes play with the pitch of it and detune it and make create loops out of it. He had done some research into um, native music in Mexico and found out that they were able to get melodies out of cactus thorns. Like that's a fifth apart, those two needles. I'm always excited trying something new. I, one of the worst things is to sort of feel any kind of stagnation in, in your work and um, the ability to branch out and, and explore new areas is, I think, exciting is what Keeps, keeps it fresh. So he would come up with uh, a, a piece of music that he, he thought was suitable for a stretch of film. And, um, 
and we simply exchanged ideas. I, uh, I would show him the film and I would say, there's a music cue starting here, Marco, and it goes on for five minutes and 12 seconds. He definitely had uh, ideas about what was, if something wasn't working, um, talking about it. And um, yeah, he seemed to enjoy that part of the process very much, coming over to the studio and, and listening to music and um, talking about the things that really inspired him and things that maybe uh, were going in the wrong direction. A few days later, I'd come back to his house to see what he had just pieced together on a synthesizer and um, listen and look and over his shoulder and uh, essentially tell him when I was happy with what I was hearing and when I was not. Uh, when something was too loud, when something was uh, too... Uh, when something was overdone, when, when something needed to be gone, when something was absent, and when something sounded too much like Enno Morricone. Um, I had the greatest, highest regard for Morricone's work, but I didn't want to hear it. Well, immediately when you see a desert landscape and, a, you know, sort of a lone cowboy riding on the horse, it's hard to, to just ignore the um, musical images that Morricone has conjured up. You can hear it. You're going to hear it anyway. But I didn't want to hear it too much. One of his first comments to me was he came to one of the show and tells I called when I play some music and he comes and sits in. And um, he looks at me and says, So is uh, Sergio Loni? He says, Is he still alive? And I said, No, he died you know, a while back. He says, well, then I think it's probably a good idea to let him rest in peace. Marco is very bright and um, high, very talented and very quickly uh, responsive. And that's really how you communicate with him is through the music and it's a very happy collaboration as far as I'm concerned. I was conscious also in this movie that, that we were trying to do something that wasn't a you know, it wasn't supposed to be a rehash of a traditional Western or any kind of, it was it's something new, you know, um, and unique.